profit-bearing activity connected to eternal activity is it spell profit you guys know profit identity i talk to that a lot if you don't know your gifts and talents how can you ever intend to profit here on earth as it is in heaven connected to said gifts and talents that's literally why god made you it's who he made you better yet the why is for his adoration and love and for us to go and make disciples out of that identity again and again and again all day every day and yet he knows the way that the world operates he's going to talk about it right here in luke 16. he knows that there's money there was gold in the garden okay the things that were here upon intention were placed here with intention out of creation so while mammon and understanding that the focus of mammon if i'm only focused on profit bearing activities through the lens of business, man, I'm cutting God off. That's not his intention for you. So yeah, we talk about it through the lens of income generating activities. I've had many business coaches who are like, do that first, check that first, make sure you get that done and then the rest of your day will flow. There's truth to that, such truth to that. But what about the deeper truth? What about the other layer connected to that? The actual capital T truth? rather than little T truth connected to how you're generating that income. Okay, income is not just something that we keep, it's something that flows through us. And so if we're constantly just in this acquisition desire, just like client acquisition, just like growing influence, just like community, if we're so honed in on hashtag numbers, dollar signs, we're limiting the bigger picture of the heart call and the bank accounts of blessings that we could be passing out and also receiving because we've fixated on greed. We fixated on ego. We fixated on numbers. We fixated on pride, lust. These things are, are of sinful nature. They're of the dark. They're of the world. And in Luke 16, you're going to get real confused first. <laughs> and then I'm going to create some clarity. As I was reading even myself, I'm thinking, gosh, this seems abnormal to every other parable that you read. It seems weird that God would say something like this, and we'll start there. He says, mm, Luke 16, 9. Here's the lesson, is what it says. Here's the lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you into an eternal home. So that part sounds pretty good. It sounds like, okay, I can do that. My worldly resources, think of money. You think of like my home. I think of like tangibles when I think of worldly resources, right? But also understanding that there are resources of heaven. There are resources of heaven. Lean into this that are not tangible. They're intangible assets that you possess, which is a part of your profit generating activities, right? Be a blessing to bless others, bless others to be a blessing. Am I saying that right? Backwards, forwards, either way, it doesn't matter. It's the same, right? We, that's our intention. And when our intention is that rather than finances, oh my gosh, everything changes. You become a magnet to the thing that you want because you are now in alignment with the desire of God, with his heart's desires. People think it's our heart desire. You want more money. You don't want to be broke. I get it. Or you want that fast car and fancy life, but ultimately the resources dwell in the blessings of heaven that exist in your eternal life. Eternal, right? We will waste away. Here I am on this Peloton and people are always like, how do you do that? You're not sweating like a pig. Yes, I am. <laughs> you just don't see it. The glow and the ring light make it all worthwhile. You're not breathing very hard. Yes, I am. I'm controlling it out of discipline. How are you controlling your resources? How are you controlling your breath? Come on, Yahweh. I think of him and the connection to those letters that make up his name that have you inhale and exhale. We're living in such an anxious world, depression and mental health, top of combo. And I feel like 
again, we're fixated. We're fixated on this mental health capacity or problem, which isn't bad, but there's so many other elements to that, right? Mind, body, soul, spirit. Technically, mind and soul are the same because your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So really, we should just say mind, body, spirit. <laughs> but I never want people to forget the emotional intelligence side of this dynamic. We talked about yesterday on the Founder Collective podcast, in case you didn't know, we have another one. Um, it's incredible. My best men of God, actually I've got so many men of God in my life, I'm so grateful. Um, but some of my favorite people, <laughs> my best friends, uh, people who were a part of my life and when I was in the pit, right? Um, and like I said, there's still parts of my life that I'm trying to crawl, crawl and claw out of, uh, especially when it comes to relational dynamics of family. But mainly, those people have seen me there and now they get to be with me in this season too and it's not over, right? I'm not at any summit because every summit is a false summit, summit until I'm with God, until I'm in heaven in that full scope perspective. So we're talking about resources, we're talking about wealth, we're talking about finances, we're talking about profit generating activities as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, and this is the kingdom perspective. Having kingdom oriented mentality will change everything in your relationships. So in this particular parable, it's the parable of the unjust, excuse me, employee. Oh, it's gonna tickle in my throat. Stand by, let me get some water really quick. Whew. I only own tennis shoes and sandals. <laughs> Good, so you're used to it. You're used to going with me, you're used to running. Hopefully you're used to drinking water too. Very important hydration. So the parable of the unjust steward, okay? Understanding this, when it goes in to talking about shrewdness and how this person operates with their master's money, essentially they've taken the master's money and they have been using it at will, wasting the employer's money. Quick hold up here, because this is very granular. If you're in an employee to employer relationship, which we all are, regardless if you're the entrepreneur or not, remember you have a CEO in heaven. So you always have an employer. <laughs> and that employer can and may let you be for a little bit, meaning lay you off, fire you, let go. Now the Lord never lets go of you. That'd be like the prodigal father being like, bye, I decided you have to go back with the pigs. That's not his intention. It's actually you, the one who is walking away based on your own mismanagement of resources. So think about it this way. God's giving you love. God's giving you favor. God's giving you financial uh, assets. And what are you doing with those things are you managing them well? Or are you mismanaging the resources from your employer, from your father, 